Hey Dad, it's Nate here again. Today we're going to talk about a number of common challenges that all software developers go through pretty much throughout your entire career. And the reason I want to talk about these is because I think they are particularly relevant early on in your career when you haven't had as much time to recognize and deal with them. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about seven challenges that software developers all face. And then at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about how to best manage those challenges throughout your day to day and your career. So with that, let's jump into challenge number one. All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is recognizing what is the most important thing that you should be focused on in your career. So that could be what is the best education platform that you should be looking at? Or that could be what is the most important tech stack that you should be looking at? Or the most important tool that you should be learning to best leverage your resume and your skills towards getting a job. Now this can be very challenging because when you're just starting out, you don't always know what the best thing is or even really know how to evaluate for what might be the best or even a good or reasonable solution. So this is something that is definitely present in the day-to-day -day working in your career, and it doesn't go away over time. All right, let's look at number two. Okay, so the second thing, and it follows right in from the first, is how to decide what is the best way of doing something. So if you're going to implement any solution, whether that's something very minor, maybe a small bug fix, or maybe it's how to implement an entire system within your application. We always wanna know what the right way to do it is. But it's a little bit of a trick question because there's often no one right way of doing things. In fact, there's often ways of accomplishing the same goal and recognizing how to balance all the trade-offs of all those different solutions is one of the hardest parts about being a software developer. So when you're just starting out, understanding what the best way is, is difficult. And it often leaves us wondering whether we're doing things the right way, or maybe there's a better solution out there. And sometimes we can get stuck in analysis paralysis, where we just don't know what to do. And so we end up doing nothing. All right, let's take a look at number three. The third thing I want to talk about is the fact that things change quickly in software. Technology changes quickly, tools change quickly, API versions change quickly, web browsers change quickly. It's all changing fast. Everybody is making improvements, shipping new software, and that means we constantly have to evolve and to adapt and to learn new skills. Now, this is exciting. This is a great thing, but it's also really difficult, again, especially when you're starting out in your career you already have such a large uphill battle to climb. And when you constantly see new information coming in, sometimes that's a little bit daunting. It can become frustrating or confusing or just overwhelming because you don't know where to start. And it doesn't always get easier, especially in the world of Android that I live in. Every six months to a year, things are changing, new tools, new libraries, support libraries, new versions of Android. It's always adapting. And we as developers have to adapt to keep up with it. And that transitions right into number four. So the fourth thing that I take a look at then is that with everything that's changing so fast all the time, it's then really hard to stay up to date on all of these changes. As developers, we want to know what the best practices are. And that often means that we have to look in a variety of areas to stay up to date on these changes, on these tools and technologies. That might mean reading blog posts, attending conferences, listening to a podcast, reading through change logs and documentation. It is a daunting job for sure. And once again, if you're new in your career, it's extra difficult. And so you start to question, am I staying up to date? Or what are the best sources? How do I find this information? And it's all very overwhelming once again. All right, let's dive into number five. Okay, so the fifth thing that I wanna chat about quickly is 
Where do you specialize? Should you specialize in a very small specific thing or should you go broader? Should you become a web developer in general or a mobile developer in general? Or should you be a UI engineer or a test engineer? Where do you want to specialize and is it benefit to specialize? Again, this is difficult because if you're starting out in your career, you don't know necessarily what you lean towards, what your preference is, where your natural aptitudes might lie, or what is most exciting and motivating to you. And so if you are looking for jobs and you find job descriptions that are very specific, it's hard to know whether you should be changing up your approach to learning and developing in your career to match these very specific skill sets that are often put on resumes. And then this leads right into point number six. So number six is the idea of comparison. Now, in this day and age, we are constantly comparing ourselves, whether that's on social media or just out and about looking at people's cars or the clothes they're wearing. And in technology, it's no different. It's very easy to look at a job description and compare yourself to the ideal requirements and think, wow, I am not nearly qualified enough for this job. Or maybe you follow a developer online and you think, man, they are doing everything under the sun. How can they speak and talk and contribute to open source and do all of this stuff? I'm not doing enough. And this comparison, like anything else in life, is the thief of joy. It is very dangerous and detrimental to us to be comparing ourselves always to these people. And again, I think that this is harder to recognize when you are earlier in your career and you're always kind of looking up that hill and knowing like, wow, I have so much to learn and all these other people seem to have it figured out. Will I ever compare? That's a very tough place to be in. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to deal with that at the end. And finally, tip number seven. The last thing that I want to talk about then is finding balance. This entire list has been a really a list about wanting more, wanting to learn more, wanting more on our resume, wanting to understand better how we should build our career, where we should specialize. And it's very easy from that lens to think more and more and more, I need to learn more, I need to do more, I need to grow more. And while growth is excellent and I highly encourage everybody to have a growth mindset, it's a very dangerous trap to fall into. And so what I want to think about then is how can you find balance? How can you balance the rest of your life, which is so important, with growing and trying to develop your career? How do you balance free time with learning the new skills and technologies? How do you balance time with friends and family with extra time at work? How do you balance time with friends and family with maybe an online course or other form of continued education? It's a really, really hard problem. And there's not necessarily a simple answer to this. If you have a simple answer for this, please leave a comment down below because I, and I'm sure others would really love to hear it. So now I just wanna talk a little bit then about what we can do to mitigate some of these factors. And for me, I think it comes down to a few key points. I've really struggled with all of this in my career because I do want to learn and I want to grow and I want to see the best version of myself be realized. But that does come sometimes at a cost. I have had times in my life where I'm very unbalanced in my career or I'm spending too much time trying to learn and not enough time relaxing. And so some things that have really helped me is to recognize that you cannot know it all, you never will know it all, and you're not expected to know it all. Again, especially when you're starting out in your career, I know I felt like I had to immediately come into my first role and immediately get up to speed so that I was contributing at the same level as everybody around me. And in hindsight, that sounds very, very far-fetched. These people have been developing for years and years. Obviously, I'm not gonna come in right away and be at the same level. And so the fact that I held myself to that standard 
really caused a lot of stress for myself at times, and I wish I would have known sooner that it's okay to not put that pressure on yourself. Another big helping factor, I think, is to have a little bit of self-compassion for yourself. Like give yourself that freedom to not know everything and then also recognize that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to not know the answer. Anybody that is trying to learn something new and develop is going to be in the same place. Everybody is going to have questions at times and need to rely on others. And kind of the last thing then that I think helps to bring it all together is that while you do wanna have balance, if you do want to continue to learn and grow, then small, steady progress is really, really powerful. If you read just a couple pages a day, then at the end of a week or the month or the year, you could have read a lot of pages, far more than if you would have just not read anything at all, or far more if you would have read one book very quickly, got burned out and stopped reading. So developing your skill set in your career is the same way. You don't have to learn it all at once. You can't learn it all at once. But if you make slow, continued progress over time, you ask questions, you recognize that it's okay to not know the answer, but that it's great to seek out the answers, and you find people around you that can help in this process, then you will be set up really well for long-term career success. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I think that this is a really important topic for people and it's been really beneficial in my life to start to recognize some of these things and understand what I can do to be, have a healthier, more balanced lifestyle while also trying to work and grow and learn. How do you handle these challenges? Leave a comment down below and give a few tips for how to best manage, how to stay up to date, how to grow in your career and how to stay balanced. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you want to stay up to date on future videos, you can hit subscribe. Until next time, guys.